I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? There's another request this time from Emmanuel. It's a paid request. Thank you so much for that. If anyone else has any paid requests for reviews, topics, reactions, pretty much any type of video, you just send the request either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this one is for the film Nine and a Half Weeks. And this is a film that when it came out, it had a lot of controversy. It was pretty much Fifty Shades of Grey before Fifty Shades of Grey. Although, nowadays, if you watch the film, it's not as crazy or as eye-opening as I guess people thought back in the day. Some may even feel it's quite tame compared to today's age. Very tame. Now, it's directed by Adrian Lyne. Sometimes pronounced Adrian Lin. He was the director of Jacob's Ladder. The original Jacob's Ladder. Which I'm a huge fan of. One of my favorite films. He also directed Fiddle Attraction. He did this movie. And it stars Tim Basinger and Mickey Wark. This is when Mickey Wark. Was the handsome new. You know, actor. That people were just wanting. In anything they could. Uh, the great promising actor. But then. Bad choices, boxing, variety of other stuff just dwindled his career, sadly. And having a tough time battling directors and being a bit full of himself. And sadly, Mickey Ward was his own worst enemy. Because the guy has a lot of talent when you watch Angel Heart. And even this film, where he's kind of a bad... I mean... I would say he's a, it's hard to say he's the villain, but he's not the the best guy either. Although, to be truthful, both of these characters are very damaged goods. At least that's the way I look at it. Uh, Tim Basinger, I liked her as an actress. Uh, you don't see her a whole lot nowadays. I think I saw in Grudge Match. That was one of the only interesting things about that film is, oh, there's Tim Basinger. Cellular, I liked her in that with Chris Evans. Tim Basinger is a character that works in an art gallery. And one day while she's out walking, she meets this guy played by Mickey Wark. Mickey Wark works at the stock market. And he teases her, buys her this expensive scarf. And... You get the idea Mickey Ward kind of sees, oh, this is a person I can push. This is a person I could control. This is a person that maybe I could, in a way, manipulate. And then it showcases the nine and a half weeks of this passionate affair. But at the same time, how that obsession or that uncomfortableness that... Kim Basinger really enjoys it and, and really enjoys the physicality 
but there's something not there, whether it be, well, uh, I guess the thing that's not there is true love, and sort of the difference between true love and passion. Tizzy's push her more and more into these sexual things, like being blindfolded, teens like feeding her an ice, ice on her body, feeding her all this food, like honey, even like cough syrup. It got to a point it was almost a parody. Like, what's next? I mean, when it got to the cough syrup, I went, it's, it's like an SNL parody of Nine and a Half Weeks. But, parody of his own mood. So, uh, again, at the time, this was taboo stuff, but you watch it now and you've seen worse on Skinamax movies. You see, I mean,. Yeah, understand though, this came out in 86 where this is not stuff they would show all the time in a movie theater of a widespread. Unless you were on 42nd Street Forever and you got to a film that was in a corner, dark and dirty, baby Pee Wee Herman is there. But. Not so much in the mainstream is the word I'm looking for. But again, you watch it now and it's like it it's again not as bad and not as crazy and not as controversial. In fact, there may be people who watch it today and they go, What was so controversial about it? <laughs> again, how times have changed. Because of the internet, because of you go on the internet and in less than five minutes you can find 50 things way crazier than anything in this movie. Now, what did I think about the film? I know Emmanuel, when he wrote, I think he thought I would rant on the film. And while this is not my kind of... I don't really go watch a lot of erotic dramas because I'm like, if I want eroticism, there's a thing called porn. And if I want thrillers, then I just want the thriller aspect. And yeah, the titties and stuff at night, but... You don't even see a whole... I mean, you see some of that, but... I didn't. Maybe not as much as some people would think. I mean, technically, there's more outright sex scenes and blown away than the film I saw with Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. Than this. This, though, I just thought was better directed. Like, it's a better looking film. I thought the look of the film... For example, there's a bit where Tim Basner... She's in the kitchen, undressing in front of Rick, Mickey Rourke, and the way it's lit, it's lit almost like a, like a music video. Like you're looking for a big fucking fan somewhere, but the, the, the bluish type lighting behind her. Uh, again, maybe to people it'll look too much like a music video, but I, I'm a sucker for that kind of look in a cinematography. And sometimes it looks kind of I don't, I don't want to say bleak, but I didn't. Yeah, I just wasn't that bad of a, a looking picture, in my opinion. Uh, Tim Baser and Mickey Ward, I thought they did a good job. Tim Baser apparently thought the make of the film, like the director, and they, they pushed her so that she would become more and more emotional. Well, that's morally right, very questionable, but uh, I thought she did a pretty decent job. Mickey Ward, I'm a fan of, like I said before. You know, I love uh, The Wrestler that came out years later. Like I said, Angel Heart, that's a good one. And uh, that definitely helps the movie. And to me, it just seemed like these two damaged people. Well, Mickey Ward, like I said, he... He does push her, but at the same time, he's passionate about it. But then he's kind of like, you do this, you do that. You see this watch each time, uh, every day at this time, I want you to think of me. And Then you have a scene where she's locked away in her office. She's looked at like a projector and she's diddling herself. And I'm like, man, the way she's lying down, that looks uncomfortable. 
But it, it's not a healthy relationship. I mean, there's a point where he kind of rapes her, and but she comes back. And there's like another moment where she dresses up as a guy, and the two of them are out. And then you have these two guys who make like homophobic slurs. And then so Mitty Wartan Baser fight those guys off, and she even stabs one of them in the butt. And that's like one of the few moments where they're really truly enjoying each other almost like equal footing. But there comes to a point where I I, I guess I wanted more in the finale where you really get more of an epiphany just the Kim Baser also has a, a friendship with this older gentleman and somehow that gets her into a frame of mind of no I should not be doing this anymore this is not healthy I, I don't know just something about that I think you really needed I, I think it would have been better if you had this really strong more Kim that she just truly fully comes out of her shell and truly and fully stands up to Mickey Ward and says we're done you know and then when she's about to leave Mickey Ward tries to say something personal about himself but it's too late and then one of the last lines he says is will you please come back by the time I count to 50 and Again, it's still that part of him that's that controlling part. It's just not going to work anymore. She's finally not going to come back. And it's one of those movies that I, I've heard a lot about the film. It's nice to finally watch it at least one time. And like I said, with the direction, the look of the film, pretty decent soundtrack. I would say I like the score even more. I believe the score is Jack Nietzsche. I want to say it's the guy who did Starman, the score to this, which is very two very different movies. And in a weird way, I kind of... I know it sounds stupid. I kind of appreciate how sexy but tame it is because that way you see it more as this passion than just porn just there'd be a difference between the two and so because of these the blindfold and the the tints of ice and honey and at one point a threesome with a hooker but it doesn't go full stinamax style but yeah i actually kind of think that works better for what its, its intention is. Um, and you do get a full on where. They're out in the rain. In this dirty ass alley. And they're up against an alley war. I'm like, alley wall. War. I mean. Might as be middle of war. This emotional war between these two. But I mean. I'm like. That's a dirty ass fucking alleyway. You'd probably staying on fucking needles and drugs and shit. <laughs> so I, it was interesting to watch at least because I liked the two lead actors and because of the hearing about the film. I mean, the film got a sequel, another nine and a half weeks, also with Mickey Ward. It got a prequel, the first nine and a half weeks. Even got a parody called Nine and a Half Ninjas, <laughs> where it took nine and a half weeks and action film. Like, I've seen the trailer, I haven't seen that movie, but it's called Nine and a Half Ninjas. So, uh, yeah, Fifty Shades of Grey, wh whoever wrote it, I, I guarantee you this was one of the inspirations. If they didn't, it's a fucking... At least compared to that movie, this... Like I said, just a better directed, better acted film. And... I, I yeah, I... I would have liked a bit more to Mickey Rourke's character where you get to hear a little bit about, but 
maybe to a lot of people this would be more of a detriment to the film but yeah i would like to have actually heard a bit more about mickey ward's past he starts at the end of the movie but it's too late and he's a guy that doesn't want to get too personal that wants this controlling state this almost this manipulative state on kim basner's character but that goes only so far for me. Like I would like to know a little bit more about this guy. <clears throat> a little bit more about it. And I guess if there's a sequel, which I haven't seen, I guess he didn't learn his lesson. <laughs> like I like said when Kim Baser. Even when she leaves, she seems hesitant because at one point she looks bad and she keeps walking. It doesn't really feel any much of a victory. Maybe that's the point. It's not supposed to be a victory, but it's just... I guess it's not supposed to be that clear black and white, but at the same time, I'm like, well, the guy did kind of rape you and... You know, maybe like at least a good punch in the nose or like something a bit more to the ending, something a bit more... I'm not saying it has to turn to the ending of Fatal Attraction, but... Just looking for a bit more, a little bit more to the characters and a little bit more to the, the finale. But if you like these kind of erotic drama type of films, um, there's a lot worse you could do. Like I said, this isn't really the kind of movie I would check out normally. Uh, but like I said, based on hearing about the film forever, like I said, the, the songs aren't too bad, the look of the film isn't too shabby, and the performances, you, know, you got two solid actors, and that helps. And Kim Basinger is a very sexy lady. Very, very sexy lady, so that's another plus. <laughs> With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.